and welcome to Small Business Snippets, the podcast from smallbusiness.co.uk. I'm your host, Anna Jordan. Today we have something a little bit different. We have a sponsored podcast episode with our sponsor, UPS. I'm joined by Arthur Lamb, Director of Marketing at UPS, and Marcus Malinga, co-founder of vitamin brand, Yuruzuki. Hi guys, how are you doing? Good, how are you, Anna? How are you doing, Marcus? Yeah, doing really well, well. So, first of all, rather than me introducing you and getting a bit winded, I'll let you guys introduce yourselves. So, Arthur, do you want to tell us a bit more about yourself and your role at UPS? Sure thing. A little bit about myself. I've been uh, very fortunate uh, to have helped customers both big and small in the last 20 years at UPS in different capacities, starting originally in North America, then in Asia Pack. I'm currently now the marketing director for our UK, Ireland, and Nordics businesses. Very happy to be here and share my thoughts and best practices that I came across. Great. How about you, Marcus? Yeah, so I'm one of the co-founders of Yorzuki. Um, Yorzuki is uh, one of the fastest growing companies in the UK. We specialize in liquid supplements, which are more bioavailable compared to um, capsules, pills, and powders. So most of what we're going to talk about today is around international shipping and how small businesses can deal with uh, the logistics and the, the issues that face scaling up and shipping and logistics. So I'm going to start off um, talking to you a bit more, Marcus, because Yuzuki has scaled up majorly over the course of the pandemic. How, do you, how did you kind of deal with the logistics of doing that and, and you know, how, how did your shipping provider help? Yeah, so um, during 2020, um, well, we've been going for, we're in our fifth year of business now, and um, each year we sort of doubled in size, and, and last year we saw huge amounts of growth, um, especially on the online side of the online, on the online side of the business. Um, sorry, there's a fire alarm going off. Sorry about that. I hope it's come off. Um, yeah, so we yeah, so so last year we we scaled really fast. COVID. Um, for our type of business w w was good um, in a sense where we employed lots of new people, more people were interested in taking um, vitamins and supplements over other products. So, um, so yeah, so it, you know, last year was a very interesting year for us. And in terms of scaling, um, you know, to triple a business in terms of revenue in the space of 12 months is a really difficult thing to do. Um, so one of the major things we had to do was ensure we had the right partner to get things made to be because it's easy to acquire a customer to get the product made, but then getting the products made to be is also one of the key elements in our supply chain. So with UPS, um, you know, for us to scale fast involves selling in different countries. Um, so selling into Germany, France, Holland, Ireland is a huge market for us and ensuring that we can get products there within a couple of day time frame is key. And UPS, I think at some points, we used to go from having a couple of orders a day four or five years ago to having full full lorry loads come in two or three times a day daily just to get orders out. Um, but yeah, to really scale fast, you need to have a good product, full supply chain from from making the product to getting the product to the customer, um, and capital. And you know, we had to raise um, investment to take us to that next level as well to keep up with the growth. So Arthur, um how do you, or somebody like UPS, how do you support a business as it scales? Well, yeah, a lot of businesses uh, such as yourself, uh, Marcus, that have gone through a rapid growth in the last 18 months. And then especially within the challenges that we see from a pandemic standpoint, we saw a huge um, surge in online shopping. So while the shift towards e-commerce was kind of expected from a long-term trend perspective, uh, but the global pandemic has definitely sped up that trend. In regards to planning uh, for changes uh, throughout the shipping and logistics space, my advice is to really make sure that your business systems uh, and processes are as seamless as possible. Uh, Tailor to the individual strength, challenges, and goals of the business needs that um, some, of, some of the small and medium-sized businesses they are seeing. Um, that's one of the reasons why that we at UPS offer a range of services uh, for businesses of all sizes. Uh, maybe you are a startup looking for a free e-commerce shipping plugin, uh, which allows you to integrate a wide range of UPS delivery services into your e-storefront, 
or maybe you are SMB looking for to expand your business overseas, such as such as what we just heard. We have a variety of solutions to make shipping process as simple as possible. But one thing that I would often remind companies, uh, as uh, as we just heard that, hey, you know what? Uh, creating the product and shipping it out, it's it's one thing. Uh, but we cannot really just focus on on that. The post sales aspect, um, including the hassle free return process, uh, would really be part of. Um, kind of instead of just creating or acquiring a one-time shopper versus acquiring a long-term repeat customer. So to help companies to scale and, and, and to really understand the e-commerce market better, um, our smart e-commerce report, uh, which you can download via the link in the description box, included findings from surveys for over 10,000 uh, consumers across some of the key European markets. In those reports, it says that 35% of our UK shoppers believe that it is easier still to return unwanted products in person. So in a way, that really tells me that there's still a lot of room to grow in regards to making the return aspect of the service easier. Um, so if, if companies have goals to cultivate long-term uh, repeat business um, and want to provide a soft, uh, smooth return, I think it is important to, to work with experienced logistic providers to able to streamline that process and able to provide different options. Um, we as UPS, as an example, we do have a comprehensive parcel return service option. Uh, you can either pre-print labels to ship out with your order, you can have mobile barcode, and also we have convenient drop-off and delivery points through our UPS access point locations. So really you can choose the best fit for you as well as for your customers. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure services like that are amazingly helpful. Um, and of course, there's been loads of changes to shipping logistics recently. So, you know, at next, I'd like to just talk a bit more about like how you kind of safeguard against those uncertainties. I mean, of course, we've had we've, we've had COVID this year, which which we weren't expecting. So, you know, as as a small business um, who who ships internationally how do you safeguard yourself against those kind of uncertainties what, what we did um, initially we were just a uk um based company um, and we set up third-party logistics centers in the usa in ireland and in the netherlands so what that allowed us to do um you know with brexit it was taking you know we, we were still using ups and we still had all the relevant paperwork, but we we're really focused on LTV, which is lifetime value of a customer. So any e-commerce company has to really focus on what is the lifetime value of a customer. And for us to open up a 3PL in a separate in a separate country to improve that customer experience, still using UPS to get the product to the end customer, made complete sense for us because we could shave off a day of shipping. So what we did to scale fast, which I'm sure lots of other companies are doing is looking at opening third party logistics centers in, in, in different countries. How do you go about setting up these third party logistics centers? Um, I guess it's like a dating process. You know, you've got to speak to lots of different companies. Um, Sue, who's our account manager at UPS, recommended a few companies we spoke to in different countries. Um, but yeah, you know, it's, it, you just got to get to know the company, understand their fees, understand how they work, and then ensure it's the right fit for your product. Um, you know, there'll be specialist 3PL companies um, for clothing, um, for food and health and wellness products like ours, um, for drinks, which might have fragile stickers on, for example. So there's all these different types of 3PL companies. Um, and it's just, you know, it's a similar process to, um, to, to finding an agency or, or whoever, you just gotta ensure you're comfortable with them as a business. And coming to yourself, Arthur, I mean, coming from your side of things, like how do small businesses stress test um, their, their shipping needs against these, these unexpected events? I think it's unexpected from a, from a UK business standpoint because of uh, what we kind of discussed, the changes in, in either from a Brexit standpoint or a EU VAT reform uh, that, that we are seeing um, uh, in July and this has happened. Um, so crossing border now requires coordination. Uh, compliance is a big is a big issue, uh, big issue, and also the right documentation and paperwork that goes all along with it. 
So as we really see that um, the new regulation takes hold and, and reforms, uh, we need we need uh, we need going to help customers to pivot their their business uh, to ensuring that they have all the information that they need in, in regards to uh, sending packages, receiving packages, working with uh, different partners, as as Marcus has mentioned. Um, so for example, a customer might not um, right now uh, know that what they need in regards to uh, shipping uh, internationally, because it is different from, from the past. Uh, tools that we, we have at UPS, including UPS Tradeability, it helps uh, customers to really understand what are some of the uh, documentation that is required and also provide estimated landed costs um, calculation, including duties, custom fees, and potential taxes. And, and one of the most important things that I, I say from a best practice standpoint is really informing your end customers when doing the ordering process that are they expected to be uh, paying for duties and taxes or would uh, the retailer, the company is taking that uh, aspect of it included in the overall price. I think that's really speaking about customer experience. Uh, another factor, that, as I mentioned earlier, is kind of the EU uh, VAT reform uh, that started in July 1st. Um, really impacting any imports into Europe that's from worldwide, it's not just for UK, that value up to 150 euros. And likely that is going to change the way that, especially from an e-commerce standpoint, how, what is the procedure and, and process is going to be. Yeah. So for people that are not aware, um, what's changing? So as of July 1st, the VAT exemption for imports into EU uh, with an intrinsic value of 22 euros has been abolished. So before, there's no VAT uh, to worry about uh, going to these customers. So everything's uh, fine, and, uh, fine and dandy. Now, th the European uh, Commission has created this, uh, they call import one-stop shop or IOSS platform uh, that they have launched to help um, to settle this VAT in Europe for goods up to 150 euros. Um, and then the last thing is kind of the online marketplace. If you are selling on that, the online marketplace itself will be responsible uh, for the compliance of the Euro VAT uh, when you're selling goods up to 150 euros. Um, now, that's a lot of jargons and, and so on and so forth. I'm not, I'm not going to be able to explain all of the, the ins and outs on this particular podcast. But one thing that we do at UPS is really to, to continue uh, our commitment uh, in regards to supporting our small business customer through these changes. So UPS has selected um, the tax consultant PwC, Pricewater, uh, Waterhouse Cooper, yeah. to offer IOSS intermediary and compliance service for our customers who currently don't have an EU-based establishment. Mm -hmm. um, so our customers can register for this uh, P uh, PwC IOSS assist assistance on our website uh, if they so choose. Great. And of course, we're talking about small businesses as a customer, but we also uh, recognise that, especially since the pandemic has hit, um, a lot of customers of your customers' businesses um, are going online and it looks as if that shift um, could move online significantly for the long term. I guess, Marcus, that works quite well for you because, I mean, you're predominantly an online product, though I understand that you do sell in-store as well. Yeah, um, you know, to be fair, the majority, it, it switches on month to month, but a big part of our revenue is still in retail. Um, you know, we're sold in close to 4,000 stores worldwide um, in, in the USA and GNC, Holland and Barrett and Boots in the UK. But we're also in hundreds of independent stores um around the uk and ireland and ups do all of our deliveries to the independent stores so for example a local pharmacy um who's ordering a couple of boxes um ups does all of our b2b so, so we've sort of used ups as a, a d2c um and a b2b solution um so yeah the shift online um you know, from a, an operations point of view, yes, it's easier. Um, but I, I, I still think being in retail is fantastic. You know, we have some great retail partners and um, it's mutually beneficial. Um, you know, we sell a lot of products in their store. It helps build the brand awareness for our brand. Um, I don't think the high street is going to disappear. I think it's just going to change on how products are sold. 
Um, but I still think more and more people will be shopping online, but I don't think the high street is going to disappear. I think it's, they've just got to adapt to how they sell products. Um, and, you know, I think put more importance on the, um, the experience for the customer within the store. Absolutely. But staying online a bit, Arthur, how do you, what advice would you give to SMBs who, who are dealing with this, this changing market who are, you know, more and more online um, and their sort of expectations as to what they would want from a business that is uh, retail and online? I, I think uh, for customer and customer buying habits, has definitely changed and I agree with Marcus that uh, the high street is not going to go away. I think people still need the interaction, still wants to see touch and feel and, and, and so on and so forth. It's just going to be operating in a different way. Now in regards to the changing habits and what they expect from a uh, from from uh, from retailers or uh, businesses, uh, we saw that from a recent uh, World Economic Forum report, it actually predicts by 2030 2030, uh, the last mile delivery expected to grow by 80%. As we know, a lot, you can buy a lot of groceries online now. There's food delivery, and online store. Uh, all those things add up, uh, unfortunately, do create global, emis uh, global emissions to rise. And the transport sectors contribute to around 21%. Uh, of that, and then from a growth rate is around 29%. But however, uh, we do also see that consumers are really leading the charge and demanding more from businesses in regards to sustainability. Um, so within our report, we, we, we actually did see uh, some insights and findings that to back this up as well. Consumers are not just, in, right now, of course, not in the boardroom to vote for any sustainability strategy of a, bit, of a particular business, but we do see that they are indirectly folding with their wallets doing their purchasing decision. Uh, so our report to see that, our, our survey see that 64% of respondents actually said that it's important that a retailer delivery partner offers sustainable delivery options. Yeah, I can imagine. 32% of shoppers uh, wanted to see small and independent retailers to offer carbon offset, uh, footprint offset uh, for their deliveries. And, and over a third of our UK respondents said that they wanted to see retailers offer out, alternative delivery options at a reduced price. So for example, if I'm able to pick up from a locker or a collection point, uh, give me that option so that I can choose and be a, be a responsible citizen while at the same time, uh, getting that flexibility and 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 such. So we at UPS, as um, we do try to offer, well, no, we do offer this flexibility via our UPS access points location, as I mentioned, offering free redirect options up to 15 minutes before they deliver, uh, providing choice and convenience to our customers. And that's that's well for for our for our customers who are businesses that are trying to provide that options to their end consumers to help them to become uh, uh, good corporate citizens as well. Uh, Marcus, are you seeing these same sorts of expectations in terms of flexibility and sustainability uh, from your customer base too? I think sustainability is a huge, a huge thing at the moment and I think it's going to continue <clears throat> for the rest of our lives, hopefully. Um, and we've invested quite a lot of money recently. Um, we've recently um, had our products um, certified carbon negative, not carbon neutral, but carbon negative. Um, and I believe we're one of the first supplement brands in the world to be certified as carbon negative. Um, we've also implemented a um, recycling rewards scheme. So we encourage all of our customers to um, recycle their sachets um, and in return, they'll get rewarded by uh, points on the website, which reduces the, the cost price of the next purchase. And I think consumers um, are happy to pay and invest more money into brands who are, um, you know, whether it's carbon neutral or carbon negative, or investing and giving to charity or doing something good to the local community. Yeah. Um, so that's definitely a big part for people looking to set up a new brand. I think it's, um, you know, maybe 10 years ago, that wouldn't be part of the business plan. But I think in today's generation, it definitely needs to be part of the business plan where you know part of your business is dedicated to helping the local community um, and ensuring you have a positive impact on the world. Yeah, absolutely. I think consumers are becoming a lot more savvy as to where 
you know, items come from and then they can do so much research themselves. So I think that's definitely, you know, such a, such a huge consideration. If, if I could add to, to that point, I, I threw a lot of figures uh, earlier, but then there's one last one that I'll, I'll throw out uh, because it relates directly to what Marcus is saying. Yeah. Um, in the research that we, that we saw in the report, it's very clear that millennials and Gen Z, um, that people that are under the age of 34, they have confirmed mm -hmm. that 53% of them in the UK have said that a brand sustainability record is actually their number one priority. So this is definitely a major shift from uh, for the previous generations and, and other target customers. So as, as brands continue to look for um, where where they sit in regards to competitiveness and, and growth um, is definitely a, a, an area that need to be focused on. And it's very happy to see that, that, uh, that uh, all the work that uh, your Suki's have been doing uh, in that aspect. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's brilliant. Um, so we've covered a fair bit of ground here. Um, is there anything either of you would like to add or, you know, you feel would be relevant to anything that we've discussed today? I think from a um, you know a small business point of view, we first started working with UPS literally on our first orders leaving. Yeah. We're, we're, we're working from you know home from the kitchen table doing one or two orders a week with UPS, and you know they've grown with us throughout the whole of the lifestyle cycle of the business, um, and now we have a couple of lorries every day coming to the warehouse. So I think it, it's it's interesting to see how. Um, you know, how you can, you know, create a partnership and that partnership isn't there just for six months just to get you from A to B, but they're with you throughout the whole life cycle of the business. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, sustaining those long-term relationships is so important. Um, yeah, do you have any sort of, either of you to have any advice as to how to, to maintain these relationships as long as, as, long as um, UPS and music you have? I think, you know, from my point of view, from a brand owner's point of view, any relationship, including the, the relationship with UPS, um, I think it's really important to have, you know, open communication, whether you're working with an investor, a manufacturer, uh, you know, 3PL or your logistics partner. It's always good just to communicate. You know, it, you always want someone you can pick up the phone to um, and just ask them a question and you know they'll answer. And if they don't answer, they'll return your call. Because lots of, you know, uh, companies won't return your call and, um, you know, you can't, it's very difficult to run a business in the early days where you can't just pick up the phone and ask someone a question. And with UPS, especially during the Brexit scenario, we were, um, you know, on the phone to our account manager a couple of times a day asking for help and advice um, on how do we get products into certain countries and the, the correct paperwork we need. And that's, um, you know, it's a very personable approach. Um, which you know, helps us, it saves us money because we're not having to employ someone else to head up that department and, and figure it out themselves. We're utilizing UPS as resources to help benefit our business. Great. Anything you want to add to that, Arthur? No, no, I think, um, I, I think as I mentioned earlier, the consultative approach that I, I mentioned that we, we go through, we really want to partner with our customers. Uh, through trough and peak, um, you know, so you, even in the um, upcoming seasons, we will be working with our customers to understand how they are seeing their orders being projected so that we can work through to ensure that we can provide um, uh, the, the top-notch service that they are looking for. Um, I think at the end, uh, I think I would say is really thank uh, Marcus and, and his companies um, uh, I guess patronage in, in regards to from from the start uh, the beginning and i'm sure that we would have more years to come to continue to partner and, and as as their company can to grow into different areas different continent different different lanes uh we'll be continue to be there with them uh through the process great well uh, that seems like a great place to wrap up so yeah i'll leave it there but thank you both ever so much for coming on the podcast it's been wonderful thank you very much Anna. thank you marcus cheers arthur you can find out more about UPS and the Smart E-Commerce Report in the description box below. You can also find out more about Yuzuki at yuzuki.com. Head over to smallbusiness.co.uk for more articles on exports and international business. Remember to like us on Facebook at Small Business Experts, on Twitter at Small Business UK, all lowercase, and subscribe to our YouTube channel linked in the description below. Until next time, thank you for listening.